I encountered this very vividly not too long ago, about a month ago, in the building where I work. And there was a man waiting for an appointment, and he saw me, and he asked, well, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm the, I'm the community mental health worker. And his immediate reaction was to make a face of disgust and step back. And I, I was kind of shocked by it. And then he kind of leaned in, still with the step back, leaned in and go, how can you tell if people are mentally ill? And I just looked at him and I said, you're looking at it. The stigmas that people with mental health issues carry. You might be violent. You're probably not reliable. You're probably unpredictable. So we better watch out. How many bullets do I have left? People believe that people with mental illnesses are violent. They're not really any more violent than the general public. And in fact, research shows that people who have mental illnesses are more likely to be victims of violence than to be perpetrators. I cook a lot of chicken stews. Uh, when I was homeless, uh, we would gather our food from uh, the garbage bins and back. I was diagnosed uh, first in 1987 with schizophrenia. I've been a truck driver for some 25 years. When I took sick in uh, 2000, I had lost everything. Uh, my car and girlfriend and apartment with possessions and wound up homeless because I didn't have the financial means to cut my losses and move on somewhere else. I had a job last year uh, in, 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 as a frontline healthcare worker. Uh, working with people with, with men mental um, health challenges while I was taking time off of work because I was trying to get myself better, they'd be calling me. <laughs> they'd be calling me every day, to, which is really not helpful to relieve my anxiety. I have a relative who is prone to periods of depression. And his employer hung in with him while he was off for months. And when he was well again, he got his job back. That just seems like a no-brainer that, that an employer wouldn't want to lose a good employee and would be able to accommodate some absences. But most employers won't do that. I think people um, with mental health challenges have difficulty with employment. Um, because there is so much stigma, right? Employers sometimes won't even go there because they're afraid. Also, there is a uh, growing trend towards depression becoming the number one health issue, not just mental health, but workplace health issue in general. If we had an ideal world, you could go in and say to your boss, hi, I don't want to come into work today because I'm feeling depressed. And that would be acknowledged in the same way that now, if you, when you're sick, you can go in and say, hi, I can't work today, I'm feeling sick. And the thing is, is they're both symptoms of an illness, and so they should be acknowledged that way. I used to become defensive at people who went, well, if they, hey, you could have cancer. You, 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 don't have, uh, you, know, you don't have diabetes, it could be a lot worse. What the hell is a lot worse than going and hanging myself or killing myself because I'm depressed, because I, 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 I feel like my, my life is over? 20% of the population will, will experience mental health issues. So this isn't just your cr average crazy person on the street. This is like your parents, your mom might get depressed, your brother might have some anxiety issues. This is a thing that affects families. I would ask my dad, you know, what's wrong with mom? Why isn't she normal? Um, and then he would just kind of brush it off to be like, oh, what's normal? Everybody defines normal on their own. I would say probably in my teens is when um, she would actually have episodes and stuff that and fin and finally my dad just had to tell me, okay, she's, she has schizophrenia. Our family didn't really discuss it outside of our immediate family. It was taboo. 
It was not something that when we would have a gathering that they would be like, okay, so what's the treatment now? And is she doing this? And this was completely off topic. You know, people will say, oh, I went downtown, this guy was talking to himself. And I'm just like, wait a minute, my mom talks to herself. Don't be talking about people like that. You have no idea what you're talking about. They're not crazy, they're sick. And then I would get that look like, oh, your mom talks to herself? And I'm like, yeah, so watch what you say, because my mom talks to herself too. And she's not, you know, just some person on the street. And without us, she very well could be. I still think so many homeless people who deal with mental health issues, and I've, it's weird, I've, I've met some of them and, and talked to them, and I'm like, where, where are these people's families? Where are these people's friends? Where Some of them don't even, they shouldn't even be out there. They're, they're very highly intelligent, creative people that for whatever reason, society has left them behind. Having the illness is not, uh, not, not a good experience with family and friends, and. Uh, kind of been dis disowned. When you have a mental health issue, uh, as I say, your friends and family sometimes walk and you have nobody. And the very best person to have on your team is somebody who's been through it. There was nobody who knew what I was going through and all I experienced was stigma and isolation from kids. Oh, you're that girl who went to rehab, that kind of thing, I was completely isolated. I ended up in treatment for the first time when I was 14. And that's when I was officially diagnosed with um, alcoholism, addiction, and anorexia. Much of my life was consumed by fighting mental illness and trying to get better or living with it in my addiction. And so a big part of who I am is like my strength from conquering that. I started Young Ones because I didn't want any other youth or young girl to have to go through what I went through because I didn't want them to have to fight the stigma that um, comes from being labeled as someone who has a mental illness. I really have to be, uh, as a woman who has experienced Young Ones is a nonprofit organization that works to break the barriers, social and economic barriers, facing youth with mental illness and addiction by facilitating access to mental health treatment and anti-stigma education. And look where I am now, and I've accomplished something, and you can get there, and I can help you. Still the will look back and help to you. People do their research. Bipolar affective disorder is a gift as much as a curse. I would not, I truthfully believe, be able to do what I do if I was in bipolar, I think. Saturday Strike Force event in San Diego. You're watching the MMA show. There's so much good that comes out of it. I wish we didn't need to be this way, but if you're, there's a chemical imbalance, it's natural. It's, it's, it's happened. It's, it's real, so don't try to hide from it. Because you came to see a show about mental illness, and you want to know what brand of crazy I am. <laughs> I wrote and performed a show called Psycho Bitch, which is based on my own story of mental illness, uh, but particularly around the stigma. So let's do a pop quiz. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you my symptoms, and you can guess what we're dealing with. <laughs> And it was really to raise awareness about the negative effects of stigma and, and how that stops people from getting the help that they need. Um, it stops people from even having the conversations that they need to have or even building the social networks that they need in order to recover. We need more workplaces that are family friendly, mental health friendly. We need a lot more mental health promotion in the workplace uh, to help people understand as well to help people know how to support a co-worker. Yeah. And it's hard to figure out, are they, are they homeless because they have a mental illness? Or do they have a mental illness because of the stress of being it homeless? Works yeah, right. I want to see a cure for cancer. I want to see a cure for AIDS, of course. I would like to see a cure for, <laughs> for bipolar affective disorder as well, obviously. But knowing that maybe that's still down the road, just the education, the fact, just try to, to, to understand and don't just blindly judge someone by what you don't see.